Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the modulus function so we can answer questions from exercise 2a. So what is the modulus function? Well the modulus function is written with two vertical lines either side of a value or an expression with x. And what it means is just to make the value of whatever is inside that bracket positive. So modulus of x um, will make it x positive, and if x was negative, it will make it positive. So in this case, if it, it's 5, then it's going to make 5 positive, and 5 is already positive, so it stays as it is. When we're doing the modulus of minus 5, we make that 5 because it's a negative number inside the brackets, so we turn it into a positive value. So what we're going to look at is graphs of the type y equals modulus f of x. But first of all, we're going to just look at substituting some numbers into a modulus expression. Here we have f of x equals modulus 2x minus 3, close modulus, plus 1. And we're going to substitute in the value 5. So do as you normally would. So replace x with the value 5. Work out what's inside the brackets first. We get 10 minus 3 is 7. Modulus of 7 is 7, because it's already a positive number. Add the 1, and you get 8. Um, but let's this time take the same function and substitute in minus 1. So times um, the 2 by minus 1, or replace x with minus 1. We get minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5 inside that bracket. And because minus 5 is a negative number, we make it positive by the modulus brackets. So we get f of minus 1 is 5 plus 1, which makes it 6. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the graph of y equals modulus 3x minus 2. So what we could do is we could sketch out a bunch of coordinates, x minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and work out values of x. And what you'll see is that... <coughs> is that for some of these values of x, you're going to get positive numbers out again. So for example, here you get 7, you get 4, you will get um, 1. And then when you plug in 0, you're going to get 0 times 3 is 0 minus 2. That's minus 2 inside the modulus brackets. But when we take the modulus of that minus 2, it becomes 2. Same happens for minus 1, this becomes 5. This one here becomes 8, and this one here becomes 11. So somewhere in between here and here, the graph is going to reach 0, at which point we would normally start getting negative coordinates, but because the modulus symbol is around the 3x minus 2, it turns all of those negative y-coordinates into positive y-coordinates. Let's just show you another way that we can do this. If we've got 3x minus 2 as this graph here, before the modulus symbols go in, then what we're effectively going to do here, oh, whoops, is effectively we're going to make all of these negative y coordinates positive, just like we did when we substituted in the values of x into our uh, equation. So what you effectively do is you scribble out the bottom half and reflect it up to the top. Let me show you that again. We have 3x minus 2 as the line here. You take the bottom half of that graph, use your rubber, rub it out, and then reflect it up to the top half. Okay. So you can work out your x-axis intersection by setting y equal to 0, and you can always work out your y-axis intersection by setting x equal to 0. Okay, and that's how you draw the basic type of modulus graphs. In fact, this technique works for all modulus graphs where the whole function is surrounded by a modulus bracket. You draw the normal graph inside the bracket first, and then anything that's on the bottom, you reflect it up to the top. Okay, the question here is solve the equation modulus 2x minus 1 equals 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the graph, a sketch of the graph for this. Just a reminder, we draw the 2x minus 1 line, rub out with our rubber the bottom half and reflect it up to the top. Just like this. Okay. So this is effectively here the y equals 2x minus 1 modulus graph. Now we need to draw in the graph of y equals 5. 
to get the intersection points. And effectively what we're doing here, to solve this equation here, we're going to solve the intersection points of the two graphs. <clears throat> okay. So, the way we're going to do this is we're going to treat the right-hand side of this graph as the normal 2x minus 1 graph, and we're going to treat the left-hand side of this graph as the negative graph of 2x minus 1. So you can see it's going downwards sloping, so it needs a minus on 2 on the gradient. And if we were to expand the brackets, it has a 1 on the y-intercept, so it's definitely going to be the t minus 2x minus 1 graph. So the reflected line is now negative of whatever is inside the brackets. Your original line that hasn't moved by the modulus stays as it is. And now what we're effectively going to do is use two different equations to solve for these two um, intersection points. So the first one on the right hand side over here, solution A, is going to be solved by 2x minus 1 equals 5. It's the standard 2x minus 1 part of the graph. So add 1 over to the other side, divide by 2, and we get 3. Now what we're going to use for solution B is the negative of the negative value of our function because this is the reflected part of the graph um, it's going downward sloping so it needs a minus 2 on the gradient and it, if we were to expand the brackets it does start on the y-axis at 1. So we're going to use minus 2x minus 1 bracket equals 5. So expand the brackets maybe or times the minus 1 onto the other side and you get x is minus 2. So that's how we solve modulus equations of this type. We draw out the graphs for both the right-hand side and the left-hand side. If it's a reflected part of the graph, the actual equation of that line, um, without any modulus symbols in there, is the negative part of your function inside your modulus brackets. And then solve two equations, and hopefully you'll get two intersection points. Okay then, let's have a go at this one here then. Slightly more difficult than before. This time we have modulus 3x minus 5 modulus close brackets equals 2 minus a half x. Same technique as before, draw your graphs out first, so starting off with 3x minus 5, draw that graph um, in there, but with the bottom half of it, rub that bit out and reflect it up to the top. Okay, now we're just going to draw the standard 2 minus half x graph, so remember it's going to start at 2 and go downward sloping because it's a negative with a gradient of a half. And now we've got two intersection points, so we must have two solutions here. So, what we need to remember is that the original part of this um, uh, y equals modulus 3x minus 5 graph has stayed where it is, so that still has the equation 3x minus 5. Now sometimes with the left-hand side, or sometimes with the reflected part of the graph, I would do this in a dotted line, and that would indicate to me it's actually the negative the equation of this line is the negative of 3x minus 5. So the equation of this line is y equals minus 3x minus 5 because it has been reflected upwards. Every negative y coordinate has been made positive, so effectively all your negative coordinates have been times by minus 1 to make them positive. Okay, let's now have a go at solving the first solution, which is this one here. We'll call this solution A. And this is how I'd recommend that you um, that you detail your work in an exam. So put on your graph and mark up the intersection points that you're calling them different letters, and then show the equation being solved of those different letters. In this case, the solution for A is 6 over 5. I just do a double check to see if that makes sense according to your answer. It has to be in between 0 and 5 thirds because that's the y x axis intersection point. Yeah, that's 1.2, this is 1.66, so yeah, that's fine. The second solution, b, is just with the standard 3x minus 5 graph. So we solve that as normal, and we get x is 2. So you can see here the only difference between solution a and solution b is that the 3x minus 5 has a negative symbol in front of it on one solution where it's been reflected and the 3x minus 5 doesn't have a negative on it where it's still that standard 3x minus 5 graph. 
Final question we're going to go through together then. Um, solve the inequality modulus 5x minus 1 is greater than 3x. So an inequality type question now. Exactly the same thing as we've done before. Draw your 5x minus 1 graph. Reflect the bottom part upwards. And then sketch in the 3x line as well. So just think about the types of gradient that we've got on hand here. This, gra this red graph here has a gradient of 5. We know that because it's got a 5 in front of the x. With the blue line here, it's got a shallower gradient of 3. We know that has a gradient of 3 because there is a 3 in front of the x. So when you're drawing these types of graphs, take into account the gradient on each of these lines and make sure that the higher gradient has a steeper line on your graph. So let's go ahead and solve this now. On the right hand side of this equation is just the standard 5x minus 1 graph and hopefully you've got used to this fact by now that on the left hand side or the reflected side this type of graph is going to be minus 5x minus 1. So let's go ahead and solve for the two different solutions. We have solution A and solution B. Solution A involves the negative graph that's been reflected upwards, so we need minus 5x minus 1. Solve this equation, we get x is an eighth. Does that make sense? Yes, eighth and eighth is in between one, 0 and a fifth, so that's good. And then the second equation, solution B, is going to be formed by the standard 5x minus 1 graph. Rearrange this and you get x is a half. So we get two solutions here, x is 1 over 8 and x is a half. And the only difference between solving these two solutions is that the 5x minus 1 equation is a negative in one of the solutions on the reflected part of the line and a positive on the standard part of the line that hasn't been reflected. But then we need to find our final answer in inequality. Now we're looking for the red line to be on top of the blue line so that's when we're in this region of the graph here, where the red line is physically on top of the blue line, and this part of the graph here. So we're looking for x to be bigger than a half, or x to be less than an eighth. So that's our final answer there. Okay, your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this one out. Okay, then let's have a go at this together, and the key to this question is a nice diagram. The first thing we need to do is we need to draw on the 4 minus 3 um, over 2x graph. So start at 4 and go down by a gradient of roughly 1.5. Now what we need to do now is we need to reflect the um, bottom part of this graph up to the top. So let's go ahead and grab a different colour. We're going to keep this line here, but then this line here is going to be the reflected part of the line. So in actual fact, when I've said the left-hand part of the graph needs a negative on it, that is not going to happen in this case here. It's the right-hand part of the graph that needs a negative on it. So this intersection here is 4. We can work out this intersection point here if we want to. We can set with y coordinate equal to 0, so three mi 4 minus 3 over 2x equals 0, um, 4 equals 3 over 2x, times by 2 divided by 3, we get 8 over 3 equals x. So 8 over 3 is our marker here. The next thing we need to do is draw in the 5 line, so that's going to be slightly above the 4, so let's go ahead and draw that one in now. And we're going to get two solutions to this, one here and one here. We've done part A already. Part B now asks for us to solve this equation. So we'll put solution A here and solution B here. Now in this type of graph here, what we can see is that the left-hand side of this line was the original part of the 4 minus 3 over 2x line. So for solution A... We're just going to solve 4 minus 3 over 2x equals 5. So what should we do here? We can take the 5 onto the other side and add the 3 over 2 onto the other side. Times by 2 divided by 3 and we get minus 2 thirds equals x. 
The second solution, solution B, it comes from the reflected part of the 4 minus 3 over 2x graph. So this means that this part of the graph here is actually with the equation minus 4 minus 3 over 2x. And you can see here, if we were to expand the brackets, we would get a positive gradient, just like we do here. And if we were to continue this line downwards, we would get an intersection at minus 4. So the only thing that's different between our solving solution for A and solution for B is that the 4 minus 3 over 2x needs a negative on it. The 5 stays as it is because that has nothing to do with moduluses. Let's expand the brackets. So we get minus 4 add 3 over 2x equals 5. Let's add the 4 onto the other side. Divide by 3 times by 2 and we get 6. So x is 6 is another solution to this equation here. Okay, hopefully that's made sense to you. Have plenty of practice from the questions in exercise 2a. Um, persevere through the difficult ones. Do challenge yourself on the later ones as well. Don't be comfortable sat in the easy ones. Thanks very much for watching.